Uh, Mr. Lindsay Hoyle. Uh, Madam Speaker, <clears throat> could I congratulate Madam Speaker and the pres President of the Council? Also, to my honourable friends for Dudley North and also for Oxford West and Abingdon, congratulate them on their maiden speeches and I hope I can follow in the same successful vein. I'd like to pay tribute to the former member for Chorley, Dendover, who represented Chorley for the last 18 years. He worked very hard in the last general election and he was a dedicated member. One must always remember that about Dendover. Prior to that, we had George Rogers, who was the Labour member who served Chorley ever so well. And from 1945 to 1969, we had Clifford Kenyon, a renowned name within this chamber, whose knowledge on farming was without question one of the greatest members that's ever been here. I'd like to go on and pay tribute to my father, Doug Hoyle. He was a member in this chamber from 74 to 79, representing the old Nelson Cone and Pendle constituency. He then went on to Warrington, where he served with my honourable friend Mike Hall in the adjoining constituency from 81 to 97. He's since been elevated to the House of Lords, and I do wish him well, and I thank him for all the support he's given me. Obviously, I'm proud and privileged and say it's an absolute honour to represent Chorley, the town of my birth, the place where I've always lived. That is one thing about me I believe is unique to most MPs. I was born there, I lived there, and I'd always worked there. So I am proud to be here representing my hometown. About Chorley, it's a historical market town. Over 50,000 acres, from Lowland near Southport to the moorlands of the West Pennine Moors. 23 parishes, 96,000 population and rising. There were lots of manufacturing from textiles to the most well-known of companies, Leyland Motors, Royal Ordnance, Horwich Locomotive Works, which despite being in Bolton West, still employed thousands from all around, including Chorley. These are now practically gone. The Royal Ordnance was the most recently in the news as a dumping site for BSE, infected processed animal offal. So it was a, a double symbol of Tory failure. Unemployment now averages 4%. That's very, very low. But it is low because over 50% of the working population have to travel outside Chorley for jobs, as most of the main manufacturing has been destroyed. But in areas we have severe unemployment, 12% in some areas, and maybe even higher. Recent job losses have included Norweb, GPT, Parite, John Wilman. And that is a danger, that the well-known companies are still losing jobs up and down the country. It's something that this government will address. I am confident of that. A recent survey in Chorley found that half the jobs on offer in the Chorley Job Centre were part-time, and the average weekly wage was £103 with one advert at one pound per hour. That is disgusting and is not acceptable in a modern society. We will be a caring society, and we will readdress that imbalance. And that is why a minimum wage is crucial to this country. Our personal and national economic security can be built in such conditions is inconceivable. And I look forward to a government establishing a commission to look in to the minimum wage. It is also about as much as the private utilities making a profit in a couple of seconds as what people earn, yet they refuse to make their contribution to getting young people back into work as detailed in the government's finance plans, and we know that our government has had a mandate to do that. As Economic Development, I was the chair of Chorley Borough's Economic Development and Tourism Committee. I helped to bring investment into Chorley by working with businesses to attract them to Chorley and show them the benefits of what we've got to offer. The Royal Ordnance site, which is more or less derelict now, once employed 30,000 people. Now it only has a few hundred jobs on that. By maximising the potential of the site, we are finally bringing back investment into our area. We are delighted to see the Computer Science Corporation choose Chorley as its base in a redundant building of Royal Ordnance, creating 400 <coughs> jobs, mainly highly skilled. 
We've also got Latham, Crossley and Davis, major accountants in Chorley, who plan to extend in creating 200 jobs. That's over the next four years. We also have the extended Akers Business Park, which is hopefully bringing in another 130 new jobs. All these were aided by the Economic Development Unit, which takes an active intervening role in Chorley business. Not by telling business how to run themselves, but by working with them to create economic conditions they require. Every week we visited firms to talk to them, to listen to them and to give them contact with both councillors and officers with whom they can deal directly with in the council. I will, as a member for Chorley, continue these links and work very hard with both business and the local authority. By working in partnership between the public and private sectors, which is one of the basis of the government's industrial strategy, instead of pitting public against private, it's a revelation to have them working together as we've been doing in Chorley for so many years. In addition, I helped found the Chorley Partnership to bring together businesses and community leaders to work together for social and economic development of the town. Chorley has lacked the support of central government and to have a progressive government which shows our aims will give a major boost to my area. Particularly, however, the creation of regional development agencies will be a massive improvement. Chorley's Economic Development Unit dealt with 442 inquiries last year. Most of these were seeking advice on sites, property available in the locality, and on potential sources of financial assistance. Yet there has been little assistance available because the previous government did not believe in it. I think it's a crying shame when the previous member thought it didn't do anything for the area to have assisted area status. Now hopefully we can readdress the balance and let's put Chorley on a level playing field with neighbouring areas in order that we can improve our area for the benefit of the people that live there. My practical experience with Chorley's Economic Development Unit shows that development support is exactly what business wants and needs and the creation of a regional development agency will meet this. It is appropriate that Europe should be dealt with the same time as the, as the economy. They are both inextricably linked. You cannot have one without the other. The previous government did not believe in Europe, and so we profited little from the support available, whilst every other country in the European Union did. Conver money is available to areas such as Chorley, which has seen a rundown of the defence, yet with a lack of of belief and interest from the previous government, we received hardly any aid in which we were entitled. What was more shocking was the fact that different rules applied to parts of the Midlands and the South East as what applied to the North West. You could have 50% funding in the South East, but you could only manage 35% in the North West. There is something tragically wrong when you can divide the country up so easily. If one wasn't cynical, you would presume it was a political decision. <laughs> Cumber money has always been important to us. In August 96, we submitted for a £3 million grant for the EC Cumber 2, which was a continuation of the old peripheral programme, under the auspices of Chorley Business Technology Centre to assist with an £8 million development scheme for part of the 1,000-acre site. Yes, a 1,000-acre site in Chorley that is contaminated, that can be used for businesses. We received little support from the government. This was scaled down to a £1 million bid, then to a £0.5 million bid, which concentrated exclusively on managed workshop facility at Chorley Business Technical Centre, and will do little to generate this massive Royal Ordnance site. But at least, if we do get the money, we'll have started some new starter units for new businesses. It's pointless to be a member of the EU when so much is available from membership, which is going begging because the government's ideology is opposed to anything positive from it. By maximising our return from the EU in terms of grants such as Convert, we can redo the sites and invest into sites with massive potential such as Royal Ordnance. Existing industrial areas which can be developed without damaging environment and contributing to the urban sprawl must be a benefit to everybody. I'm delighted we now have a government which is committed to getting the most out of the EU through its membership and by working with other partners and taking all we are entitled to. I shall be lobbying ministers hard to ensure that Chorley's case is heard and to support the early creation of economic development agencies 
which will do so much to improve the economic success of the region such as North West. I hope that Royal Ordnance Site will become a flagship for the whole of the North West. It must be one of the biggest pieces of brownfield sites in the UK. It will benefit the whole of the North West and is well placed between the two major motorways and a railway line coming through the centre of the site. This is a great opportunity to save green fields and to create new jobs for the North West mm -hmm. as a whole. Yeah. Yeah.